Hello everyone and welcome to another Roaring Records tutorial. Today I want to talk to you about beating audio overload in Logic. Um, audio overload happens to me uh, quite frequently, especially if I'm trying to do a 96k uh, type of recording. Um, I don't have one of those big recordings up here, but I will show you the things that I would do to beat audio overload in Logic um, as I was going into a project. So I don't know what phase of a project you're in when you hit audio overload. You might be in the recording phase. You might not be in the recording phase. But uh, let me show you how I watch out for uh, audio overload. So your typical Logic window when it comes up Wait, first of all, let's just make sure yours, your logic looks like mine. If you go into Preferences and Advanced Tools, I have all of my advanced tools turned on. Um, you can enable all. I recommend you do this just the first thing you get logic. I don't think you should learn it the other way. I think you should have access to everything right off the bat. So number one, make sure you do that. Number two. Uh, this little window right here is very nice. It tells you what bar and what beat you're on, how to keep the tempo, your time signature, your key signature, all of that stuff, but it can tell you so much more. If you hit this little down arrow and come to custom here, it tells you your CPU usage and your hard drive usage. If you click on CPU load, double click actually, um, here's your performance meter. And so you've got your hard drive over here. You've got your computer threads um, over here uh, for your different CPU cores, which is really fun to take a, a watch in. Um, you'll notice that on recording or listening monitoring mode, most of the activity is over here on these threads. And as you do playback, you're going to see a lot more information pop up on those. So I'm just going to slide those up here so we can keep a closer eye on them now nothing I've done here is an extensive um, track you're not I would never get audio overload on this unless I added like 15 different reverbs and a whole bunch of delays and all that kind of stuff which is just not uh, what we're gonna need so if you were to be experiencing audio overload or experiencing above 75% on all your threads um, here's what I would do first if and only if you are done with your recording process, you can come to Logic Pro Preferences and go to Audio. Now, there are lots of different things. I have another video out to tell you everything to do to change your audio settings and how to get to 96K as your recording uh, sampling rate and all that kind of stuff. But your input buffer size. If you're done recording, I repeat, if you're done recording, you can bump that buffer size up to 1024. If you bump it up to 1024, you've greatly increased the um, buffer size, but it also increases the resulting latency based on that. So um, you can uh, bump it up and have that latency extend, but when you extend that latency, you're also going to have problems recording because you will hear the delay and it will make it really hard to like play guitar in time and stuff like that so if you're recording keep the latency low um, or the input buffer size as low as you can um, if you're editing afterwards you can bump it up without risk for any problem so that would be my first stop to avoiding audio overload um, second stop I'm going to play just a little bit of this for you Okay, so obviously we've got a little um, classic electric piano thing here. We have a distortion uh, amp just so that you could see that it had an extra plug-in on it. And this is a guitar, um, actual audio guitar, not MIDI, that I played in. And I put a BX console, uh, SE9000 console on it. Now, uh, one thing that would be causing this to have problems is you can see because of this arrow and the take six that's listed there there are actually six previous takes on there well you could comp out these takes and be like hey i want to use this out of this and i want to use this and all that 
or you could make it just one. And for my purposes, I like to take six the best. So I'm just clicking and dragging where I want that to be. And so all these other five takes are useless. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on the comp and I'm going to come in and I'm going to flatten and merge. Again, I clicked on the B and I came in to flatten and merge. And I'm just going to turn that now into one track. There are no more stacks of tracks there. I can't get back to those unless I edit undo, but I know that this is the one that I wanted to keep out of those. So there we go. We've got one audio file instead of six audio files being there. That saves the computer a lot of memory and a lot of searching, and it doesn't have to worry about you going back in the middle of one of those and picking a different take so it makes everything run much simpler. You can actually see the threads have already dropped just by reducing those just a little bit. So now that would be a step to increasing the ease of the computer load. Now you may ask, you may have never seen a comp track. How did I get that? Well, I got that by not deleting every take that I took. So if you make a take and you want to keep it, because you potentially like part of it, just record right over top of it. Just start back at the beginning, hit the record button, and it'll keep each one as a separate take, like what you just saw for me. But remember, when you're done, go back and get rid of the ones that you don't want. Um, so the next thing that I would do to reduce this computer threading is now that I have recorded my guitar part, um, I don't want to monitor that channel anymore. And I really don't want to record enable on that channel anymore. So I don't have to have an input assigned to it. So if you open your track inspector, which is this fun little window right here, or you can do this from your mixer if you're more comfortable with doing it from the mixer. Either one, I'll show you both. You can click right here on input number one and now turn this to no input. Again, that's here. I'm going back to input number one and I'm going to switch to no input. Either place controls the same thing. When I reduce that to no input, now it's not trying to monitor everything that's coming in. And you can already see that my performance meter is down to next to nothing now. Because the only thing I'm really monitoring is my uh, vocal signal that's coming in right now on this audio one channel. So um, if you've stacked up like eight layers of your own voice recording, each time you get done with a layer, go back in and knock that input out right here. You don't need it, and it's just taking up CPU usage that you don't really want. So um, go back and knock that out. I find that that greatly reduces my computer overload and it makes all the difference in the world for what I'm trying to do there. Now, let's go one step further. If you've already done this and you're still getting a massive amount of audio overload, say you have 20 or 30 tracks, you've got a few reverbs, you've got all sorts of stuff sent on buses and all of that kind of stuff. Well, the next thing you can do is what we call freeze a track in place. And freezing the track means that the computer is going to go through and build that audio file for that track with your um, plug-in settings exactly as is, and then it's going to remember that and not have to tax the computer to do the plug-ins. You might consider that a bounce in place, but in bounce in place, you can't go back and edit later. And with freezing, you can unfreeze and refreeze and all that kind of stuff. So let me show you. Um, to get to your freeze options, we are going to right click just kind of in the light gray area, not on top of one of these necessarily, but just in the light green area. Then we're going to go down to track header components. Now this is your track header. So we want to add something to this track header. And when we add something to this track header, we want to add the freeze option and notice the little, um, snowflake appeared right here. So if I want to freeze my guitar part, I'm going to click the snowflake. Notice the record option now goes away. When I hit the play button, what's going to happen is it's going to process this track using this audio and this uh, plugin, and then it's going to hold that audio in its memory. So all I have to do is hit the play button 
and it just went through and froze it. And now you notice that I can't actually access my plugin. It grayed out that plugin. So it's going to tell you, hey, plugin load as needed. Um, and if you want to use the plugin, you need to go back and refreeze it. So now I've frozen that track. Look, every time we do a step of this, I'm just minuscule using my uh, computer performance now. Um, so now we've got the ability to play this over Frozen. So the good thing there is that you notice that it did not freeze out my uh, slider. It actually left my slider to where I could control the volume on the track. Um, but that's the only thing I could control was the volume on the track. Now we'll freeze the uh, other MIDI track. Um, so all we have to do is hit play. And it processed the freeze. And you notice it froze out both the electric piano instrument, so I can adjust the tone of that. And it adjusted out the, the amplifier that I had added to get that crunchy effect. Again, as I play it, uh, you'll be able to see that I can move the volume. So there we did a run of the track with everything uh, frozen in place. So you have the options there for all your uh, freezing choices and it makes your computer CPU usage just absolutely minimal. So if you get a really big uh, track, you really wanna consider doing this. Um, if you're getting a lot of really frequent audio overload, this will really help reduce the amount of work that your computer's having to do to make the sounds that you want. I hope you found this has helpful. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. Thank you for watching.